Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. So Adam is wandering around the garden. and just God can tell he's lonely. Just a lonely guy. So God goes to Adam and says, you know what? I've been working on this new thing. I'm pretty excited. It's called woman. I think you're really going to like it. And he said, now, the way I got this thing all worked out, a uh, woman is going to be someone that just encourages you, just builds you up all the time. So there's nothing but good to you. Yeah, when she goes shopping, she'll never spend too much. She'll, she'll, she'll cook and she'll clean, and she'll never disagree with you. Whatever you say, she'll agree with you. And if you ever do happen to have a fight or an argument, she'll be the very first to apologize and the first to admit that, the, that she is wrong. Adam's like, oh, my gosh. Sounds amazing. Yeah, I, I, what was something like that's going to cost me? And God said, well, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. And Adam <laughs> said, well, what can I get for a rib? And the rest is history. Come on, somebody out there. <laughs> we start a brand new series today called Victory in the Dark. That God does His biggest work in the darkest areas, in the darkest times of our life. That's when the miracles come forth. That in a way that we can actually get excited when an area of our life gets dark. Now, you know me that I, I like to make things, like especially my, my series, I like to do shirts and all that. And so I was excited, right, with the staff. I'm like, ooh. And then so I'm victory in the dark. I'm like, you know, it'd be cool if shirts would just say VD on it, right? And I was like, VD would be awesome, right? And so I'm all excited, VD. And so I'm telling, you know, when my staff members goes... I don't know if you want to call it VD. I'm like, well, why would I want to call VD? And they go, well, you know VD is bad. I'm like, what do you mean victory in the dark is good? They go, no, you don't want to get VD. And I went, oh, you're right. Those shirts, because I was going to have it say, get, you know, I got VD at Living Word Bible Church. <laughs> I got VD, ask me how. I thought these shirts have been great. Right. <laughs> oh, my Lord, I know. Thank the Lord I got a staff. Good, good thing we got a staff that I just go yes. Instead, they go, maybe not. But even when I thought about it, I'm like, it's still today. If you post on social media, you could say, I got VD. No, no you said no? When's the last time we got VD? Anyway, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Victory in the dark. Come on, people. <laughs> Hashtag VD. Anyway, I'll be done with the VD. Turn to your neighbor say, I got VD today. <laughs> it's victory in the dark. No, all I got is nose, and we're done with the VD. Amen. You know, it's interesting how dark can change the circumstance. You can take the same circumstance, right, the same environment, and all you do is add dark to it, and all of a sudden it's, it gets worrisome, fearful, anxiety, stress. I know we go back uh, fishing at, in the backwoods of Wisconsin, a little cabin there. And during the day, you're outside and it doesn't matter going through the woods. You can hear noises. It's not a big deal. But as soon as it gets dark, you're like, I think one of us is going to die, right? It's like just the dark. You hear a noise, and I'm like, okay, uh, whoever's the slowest is probably not going to make it. Love you, Dad. I don't think you're going to make it, though. <laughs> just because and nothing changed. Everything's the same except for it got dark. And in our seasons of life, sometimes when we have a setback, things aren't going right, uh, maybe it seems like a little, little, something's missing in the relationship, and, and things aren't going just right, something happened the job, the marriage, whatever it is, and things seem to get dark, we tend to get into stress, fear, worry, and anxiety. But what I'm here to tell you today, that we've been designed to have victory in those dark areas of our life. That God does his biggest moves in the darkest times. The story starts off with Gideon today. And uh, Gideon is in one of those really dark areas. I love Gideon because we can all relate. We've all had those times of life where things just are not going well. And Gideon's hiding from his enemies, right? You can tell as you show up in, in Judges uh, chapter 6 that he has just such low self-esteem. He's at the bottom of the bottom. He even talks about, I'm the worst of the worst, the least of the least, right? He has no hope. Has no, there's no future for him. He's, just, he's not doing well in this season of life. And, and, and he's threshing wheat in a wine press is interesting. Because a wine press at those times is basically a pit. So he's down in a pit, 
and he's threshing wheat. But you can't thresh wheat in a wine, uh, a wine pit because wheat, you need one, a hard surface, a concrete type surface, a rock surface, but it needs wind to be able to take away the chafe and the bad stuff. So you had to be able to have the wind. So here he is, like some of us get, or we've all had seasons where I'm doing and I'm doing, and I'm threshing, and he's going nowhere. He's going nowhere. Doing all this work and nothing seems to be coming out of it. Just spinning his tires. And maybe that was you, right, in your job. You've been in a season of job and you're given everything. It's going nowhere. The marriage, it seems like we've just been going backwards. I give all that I am into this marriage and it doesn't seem like it's, it's been going anywhere forward, right? You got a teenager and you're reading the books and you're doing everything you know to do, but you don't seem to see any difference in this season of life, in this time of life. You're, you're doing all the diets and everything, but it doesn't seem like there's any difference, right? You're like, I still don't have Scott's body yet. And so you're not seeing, right, the, re- the results, and God shows up, the angel of the Lord says it shows up, and the angel of the Lord says, you mighty man of valor. How many people know that God will never speak to you like a victim? He'll always speak to you as if you are a victor. He'll never speak to you based on your circumstances and the bottom pit that you feel like you're at. He speaks to you as if you already are everything that he created to be, that you're already walking in your purpose and in your destiny. Come on, somebody out there. Not as the dirt, but as the jar, not as the jars of clay, but instead of the treasure that's on the inside, that he sees you complete, he sees you finished, he sees you amazing. And as I'm looking out here today at the mighty men and mighty women of valor, God is saying to you, I have put greatness on the inside of you. You were designed not to stay in the dark, but to shine in the dark, to be a light unto the world, that I'm going to do and impact the world around you. That's how God always speaks to you and I in the midst of our problems and our circumstances. Oh, mighty man about valor. But Gideon does what, all, myself included, what we've all done at least at one point or another when things aren't going right. Gideon goes, God, where you been? Where you been, God? Like everything is in disarray. The whole nation is falling apart, God. And wondering where you, what have you been doing? Right? My life is falling apart. Nothing is working. Where have you been? And Gideon has a moment there. He's got a crossroads that we all have. And Gideon decides to pivot in the right direction. Because there, as long as you see God as the oppressor, you can't get out of your oppression. As long as you see God as the one that brought the darkness, you'll stay in the darkness. But as soon as you turn and see God as your Savior, you're looking now at the light. You switch a light switch on. Now, come on, somebody. God can begin to shine on the circumstance. But as long as you stay as a victim, and God, where are you at and what have you been doing? You see David do this on the fly. David falls in. I mean, David had a tougher life than I think nearly all of us have had, right? Things are just bad. And he'll be like, God, where are you at? And then the next verse, he's like, but God, you're my shield. You're my buckler. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. You always go before me in the presence of my enemy. Though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemy. You see that in the time of dark, David has a quick second where he's like, where are you at? And then he's reminded of the God that he serves. And then God does the impossible. In the darkness brings the light time and time and time again. And the same thing he'll do for you and I. Number one, write this down. When it's dark, turn to the light. Turn to your Savior. Turn to God is the first thing that you and I do. We don't turn to, to, the, to, the, to the government. We don't turn to the society, the systems out in the world. But our first action, our first response should be to turn to God. And God, I know that you have some plans for me. I know you're working behind the scenes. I know you're bringing something great to my life. Here are our staple scripture in this 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Throw that up there. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light. See, when I realize that God is the light of my life, I allow him to shine in and through me in the darkness of this world. That you and I, in the time of setbacks, in the time when things aren't going right, we have an option. 
Do I continue to stay in the dark and blame God and blame the circumstances? Or do I realize that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but my God has come so that I can have life and have it more abundantly? That I simply turn away from the negativity and I begin to walk by faith that knowing that my God turns all things to good. Come on. All things to good for those that serve Him. You have an option. You have a choice all the time. I'm a, I love movies. I do. And uh, ever since they got where you can reserve your seats online, that's my favorite thing in the world. I hated battling for seats. That's just the way that I am. And so uh, we we're going to see a movie with family. And so I picked out our seats. And I don't like to be like by people also if I can help it. So I got myself a row. Nobody else is in the row. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. Got good seats. And uh, I like to get there early. I really do. I like to watch the previews. Holly doesn't really like the previews. She doesn't care if we get there later or early. It doesn't matter to her. So we usually compromise, and we get there late. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I'm trying to rush in. i got to get the popcorn and all the stuff for everybody. I'm trying to rush in. We get in. You know, it's dark, and I don't see good at all at the dark. My, my kids won't even let me drive at night in the dark. Like, I just don't see good in the dark because of, I had the, I had the, like, I was number 15 in the nation to have LASIK. And so I see good in the day, but in the dark, like right now, I see nothing. You all could try to play a trick on me and leave, and I would never know it. Like, I would, <laughs> I'd get done and go, hey, where'd they go? And right, and so, you know, I'm walking in, and I'm fumbling around, and so I get into my seat, and I had a seat here for Holly, and the, the, then the rest of the kids sat down there, and now I'm into the movie. The movie's going, and I, I don't watch movies. I experience them, so I'm ducking and weaving, and the, right, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing the whole movie. I'm so into it at this moment, and then finally there's a breather, ah, right, and then, oh, and then there's Holly's hand, and so I, I put my, my arm on, uh, uh, right here, and as my fingers went into the fingers of the hand here, I was like, man, her hands are really rough. Like, I don't know if she needs to get some of that lotion on those things. I don't know if she's been working with concrete all week, but that's a, that's a rough. And then I'm like, that's a big hand? Is she retaining water? Because that's a massive mitt. Then I got my hand on. I'm like, that's weird. And then right here, I'm like, and the hair, it's like I put my hand in grass. I'm like, she's going to have to nair or do something, because I can't do whatever this is. It's not good. And so i very confused in the dark, and I look over, and then staring back at me, I go, well, Holly doesn't have a beard. I know that for a fact. <laughs> so me and this guy are just looking at each other for an awkward amount of time in the moon. It was like really awkward. And then I just slowly removed my hand. <laughs> he slowly removed his hand. I went back to watching the movie. But then I'm trying to figure out, you know, what he, I've never held a man's hand before in my life. I don't know what to do, right? Do I, do I call him? Do I, do, like, do I take him out to dinner? Like, I don't want to be that guy. I held your hand and then I never called you. Like, I don't want to be that guy, right? And so I just grabbed my wife's hand and I'm like, oh, that's much nicer. Movie's over. We didn't even look at each other. We just both got up and went our other directions, <laughs> right? And I'm sure there's going to cut, because all we got is both got a story. And I'm sure there's going to be a time where he's on YouTube. He's like, wait a second, that guy, that's the guy that held my hand in the movie. He's a pastor? How? And so, now we can, in the time of the darkness, right, we can hold the world's hand and all the stuff, and it's not comfortable at all, or we can hold God's hand in the time of our darkness. Come on, somebody out there. That this right here, it feels right when I, we do it God's way. So we pick up the story with Gideon. It's nighttime. Once again, God does his biggest miracles at the time at night. And in Judges chapter 7, God says, today, and he's talking in the dark again. And I think this will minister to somebody, some people that are here today. He says, your victory is happening now. And then he says to Gideon, he goes, if you've still got some fear in you, why don't you go down and listen to what they're saying, right? And so Gideon sneaks on down in the night there and the, right away when he gets there, they're already, the enemy's already talking. And they're talking about this dream this guy had. He goes, okay, I had this dream. This dream, you read it in, in, in Judges uh, 7. He said, there was a, a, a loaf of bread rolling down the hill. Right? I was like, wow, okay. And he says, and it crashed into our camp. And I believe this is a sign that God is on Gideon, and Gideon is going to wipe us all out. And it says this, that Gideon, when he heard this, he was built up and he was encouraged. He was, he was fired up and excited. 
Now, what does the bread represent? Well, remember, Jesus is the bread of life. Interesting. Jesus, and the Word of God, right? Jesus says, I am the Word, right? And so the Word of God is what you and I turn to in the time of dark. Watch the Scripture in Psalms 130, and I think it's uh, 130, 130, 130. Throw that up there for me, Betsy. Oh, it's up top. God's Word does what? Brings forth light. We hear enough negative in the dark. Number two is turn to God's Word in the time of your darkness. Right away, it begins to build you up, and you're able to see past the darkness and see the light. You read that I am the head, and I am not the tail. You read that God says, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You read that the enemy shows up in one direction, but will flee in seven. You read, I am blessed when I go in, and I am blessed when I go out. That which is born of God will overcome the world. Greater is he that is within me than the problems that are in the world today. I begin to read what God, sickness and disease cannot live in this body. By his stripes, I have been healed. I am sorry, doctor, but you are wrong and God is right. The Word of God begins to bring to me an encouragement that I could not get anywhere else. Number two, turn to the Word of God. In the instant, in the time when things get dark, that we are a church and a people who build ourselves up on God's Word, that it reminds me that the devil has no power over my life, it reminds me that though it is dark, God is light. It reminds me that I am victorious. It reminds me that in the time of famine, God makes wells spring up. It reminds me that what the world is going through, I don't have to go through. That the things around me may touch the left and the right, but none shall touch my house. My house is protected because I have built my house on the word of the Lord. You get dark. Things get dark around you. You turn to the light. You turn to the Word of God, and it'll encourage you and build up. Isn't that what we see throughout the, the Bible? That Israel, right, when the, Israel was going through their problems, it was a simple turning to God, and everything changed for Israel. Job, everything's a mess. He turns to God, and instantly he gets two times of everything that he lost. David was incredible constantly turning to God over and over again. But one of the things that bears out in the Scripture from cover to cover is that God is the one that turns the dark into light. That He'll take the pain and He'll turn it into a promise. He'll take the setback and He'll turn it to a setup. Whatever is negative in our life, God loves to turn into the positive. This is what He does, right? Joseph gets thrown into a pit by his brothers then sold into slavery. What a Bummer of a day. I'm going to tell you that. That's a bummer day. But then what does God do? And then God shared this with me. Me and Jason were collaborating and talking. God turns your pit, right? What's the difference between a pit and a well? Water. Somebody said just water. It's water. That's the only difference. Some of you out there are in a pit. It feels like it's dark. It's helpless. But God brings forth the water, the living water, into your pit. And what was death now becomes life. He changed pits. Joseph goes in the pit because of somebody else, but it's what catapulted him to be in second in charge of Egypt, saving a nation and saving his own family. And in the end, Joseph says to his brothers, he said, what you meant for evil, God turned around for greatness in my life. Come on, those people in your life that meant to harm and to put you down right, and take away from you, they took some stuff as a child away from you. God says, I, what you meant for harm, devil, God's going to use for greatness in my life. It's going to be used to crush the head of the enemy. It's going to be what God uses for my purpose and for my destiny. God turns your pits into a well. He brings life. I thought it was interesting that Gideon is threshing wheat, but then God uses a picture of bread to encourage and build him up. Isn't that interesting? He took right him going nowhere, his nothing, and he turned it into victory and to everything in his life. God takes pain, and He turns it into power. He takes the negative, and He finds a way to always turn it into the positive in our lives. You know, the cross 
Man designed the cross to bring fear. It was, it was designed to be the most torturous death that you could give to somebody. So back in the day before Jesus, you saw the cross, it meant death. It meant uh, 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 condemnation, it meant you were cursed. It, 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 it meant that there was no hope, it meant that there was an ending. It meant, right? It, 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 every mean, when you saw people see the cross and they would tremble in fear. And in one moment, why would God take, choose the cross of all things? Because He wanted to take the worst thing that man made and make it the best thing that man ever got. The cross that used to be death now was life. The cross that was condemnation now is forgiveness. The cross that meant an end now was the beginning. A cross that was fear now is hope. From that moment on, the cross had a different meaning because God takes the worst and he makes it into the best. I don't know what cross type things you had in your past, but I'm telling you today, if you put it in God's hands, he'll take the worst and make it into the best. He'll take, come on, he'll take the pain and make it into power. He'll make it into a promise. The grave. Come on, the grave is bad. It's no good. But when they looked into the grave that was open and there was no Jesus in there, that he had been risen from the dead, Right? Oh, death, where is your sting? Death, you ain't got no sting now because what was an end now became a beginning. Right? What was finite became infinite. What was a curse? Paul said this. He said, it's better to die. Death became better. Oh, devil, I hate to tell you that what you thought was destruction, God turned into life. And I don't know what you're going through in your life, but I can tell you this. It might have been bankruptcy, but he put bankruptcy in God's hands, and he'll turn it into such a blessing you can't contain. It might be divorce, and it seemed like an end, but God turns it around, and it's the beginning of something amazing and something blessed. It might be a teenager that's going the wrong way, but in an instant, God turns it around, and you got the next Billy Graham that's walking this planet. It could be the sickness and the cancer that the doctor says there was an end, but God turned it around and it became a testimony that crushed the head of the enemy that wherever you go you're talking look what God did look what the doctor said I would be dead and I am alive I am going and I'm doing that addiction that was supposed to end your purpose and God had that fall off of you in an instant and now you're going around to everybody else that's addicted and you are praying it's falling off of them and what the devil thought would end your life is what you brought life to everyone you came in contact with. Come on, somebody out there. That thing that was stolen from you as a child became a testimony of how God washed it away and gave you still a purpose, a value, and a destiny. And now you use that stolen to give back life to everybody you talk to. Come on, somebody in this house. Come on, if you've been stolen from, <coughs> you've been taken from, you've been in the dark, you realize that God is your light. But what do we do? We got to turn to God. Have faith in God and turn to His Word. And in those steps, your faith gets built up. You see the light and you allow God to turn the negative into a positive. The setback becomes a set up. The Bible says those that have lost the most love the most. Right? And if you've lost a lot, that just means that God's got something big on your life. Something huge on your life. Bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to pray for those that feel like they're going through a dark area of life. It could be a dark area in your relationships. It could be a dark area in your past. It could be in your finances. It's just, it just seems like it's dark. And I, I want to get out of this. I'm just, there's a, there's a huge struggle in an area of my life today. And if that's you, I want you just to put your hand up right now for me to pray with you. See, hands, of course, all over because we all walk through it. I want you just, nobody's looking around, just to stand up with me right now so I can pray with you. If that's you, marriage has gotten, it's just hard. Maybe you're walking through a divorce, you're walking through a bankruptcy, you're walking through something, something dark, something's heavy. And you're like, I'm ready to turn to the light today. And I don't want you to think about it. I want to pray with you. I want you to just come up front right now. I just want you to just come on front and allow me to pray with you right now in this season.
that God will turn your pain into a promise. That he'll turn your setback into a setup. That God's got something big that he wants to do for everyone's life. Turn to the light right now. It might be a marriage that needs this. Come on, squeeze on in here. You gotta get a little full. Come on, come on all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. It might be a marriage that needs some light in it today. It might be for a teenager, it might be for a child. Maybe your child was diagnosed with something. ADHD, right? Autism, I don't know what. I'm just, as God's putting it on my heart, something. I want to see that miracle happen today. It could be a doctor's report. It might be something in the family. Praise the Lord for each and every one of you up here today. As I pray for you, I want you to see it. It's important that we see it. See the light of God shine in and through you in this time. That we make a declaration as a people that I turn to God in this time. That your word, what does the Bible say? Your word be a light unto my path. That's what the Bible says. Your word, that we are people that live and walk by the word of God. I get up in the morning, I start it off with the word of God. At lunch, I get some word in me. At night before I go to bed, I get some word in me. Because in my dark times, it is your word that adds light to me. It's what encourages me. It's the loaf of bread in my time that nourish me. Give me this day. My daily bread. That's not talking just about the physical. I'm talking about the spiritual. That every day we need the word of God in our life. But we declare today as I pray over you that we're turning to God. God is hopeless on my account. I can't do it. But with God, all things are possible. I put this circumstance in your hand. That's what me and Holly did in 2008 when we lost everything financially. We said, well, we can't do it. But God, you can do it. And we put everything in God's hands. And in 12 years, I'm well more blessed than I was in 2008. Not because I did anything, but because God turned my pain into power. He turned my setback into a setup. And that's what he's doing here today. That marriages that are struggling right now, that we can't do it, but God, you can do it. You can do it. We can't make this work. But God, you can make this work. That you're softening up hearts today. That you're touching hearts today. That you're opening up and you're, you're letting the, the past go today. And a lightness. You know, in the dark, just a little bit of light shines everything up. You're going to walk out of your day with just some light that's shining in that circumstance. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of everybody out there, also raise your hands out and pray with me. Lord, we pray right now. We pray right now. The same thing that Gideon got in his time of darkness. That they realize as they leave here today, they're mighty men and women of valor. That they have purpose. They have worth. That you put great things on the inside of them. That they were not designed to just get by. Just to, to sit in a wine press going nowhere. But they were designed to flourish. They were designed to walk in victory. They were designed to go forth in greatness. That you put treasures on in the inside of them. That you put on nobody else. They have things in them designed in this time. Everything they need. The Bible says everything they need, they already have. Everything they need for a great marriage is already in them. Everything that they need to get over the past is already in them. Paul prayed this, and we pray now. Paul didn't pray for power. He prayed that they would realize the power they already have. And so we pray right now that they realize the power that they already have to overcome whatever circumstances in their life. That, Lord, that you are that power working in and through them. That your light shines through them. And, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you give them the faith and encouragement as Gideon did today to walk out of here knowing that you're working behind the scenes to turn the pain into a promise. That you're working behind the scenes to bring light in the midst of the darkness. That they walk out of here excited because the darker it is, the bigger miracle you're going to move on. That we walk out of here today committed, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to your word. We, we, we live by your word. We constantly are speaking, reading, meditating on your word, Lord. Because we know that it is the light that we need, the faith that we need to catapult 
us into all that you have for our life. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a hand clap. Somebody strive. Come on, shout out amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know where you're going to end up one day when you die, I want to give you that opportunity to get saved. It's simple. It's easy. You don't have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You don't have to be perfect. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was raised from the dead. I get it. You're going to make some more mistakes. We all do. But it doesn't take away your salvation. When I believe, I'm saved. Say this prayer with me. Believe it in your heart and you're saved. Dearly Father, I ask you right now, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and was raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. You're saved. Make sure you get yourself in a church. Be blessed. We'll see you next week.